What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cinema Trip Reviews. I am Wyatt, and today on the show, I'm going to be talking about Late Night with the Devil. If you haven't already, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Cinema Trip Reviews. Also, wherever you get your podcast, drop in and leave us a good review there as well. So this week, I'm talking about Late Night with the Devil, a movie that a lot of people have been talking about lately. It's produced and being released on Shutter here in the next month or so. It has actually made its theatrical debut, actually raking in a decent amount of money uh, recently with the new story that it raked in like six hundred sixty-six thousand six hundred sixty. Six dollars in one day, which is pretty interesting. You know, having to deal with the devil when you get two six six sixes in there. Not sure if this story is true or not. Saw it's been kind of circulating. I thought it was pretty interesting, though. This movie is directed by Cameron Carnes and Colin Carnes. I, I don't, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing their name right. I don't know if it's Cairns, Carnes. They haven't really directed anything as of like noteworthy that I have seen. Like nothing that I even really recognize. But this one has been on a lot of people's radars, not only because it's going to be a Shutter movie, but also because it stars David Dasmalkian in the the lead role here he's been you know in a lot of horror movies as of recently he is a big horror buff himself for those who don't know this movie is set in 1977 and it takes place over the course of one taping of a late night television show hosted by jack delroy who is david dasmalkian's character now jack delroy has been in the late night biz for for quite a few years at this point but he hasn't never been able to really top the king of late night you know johnny carson who was at the very top and has held the throne for many many years you know after that, I forget how long he was on television, like 30 something years, I believe, before, you know, you know, David Letterman came in, Jay Leno came in and you know, Conan, what have you. And then you, it's better not to talk about the other late night, you know, the ones that are on as of right now, because they're not really noteworthy compared to the other ones I mentioned. But the whole movie takes place over the course of a taping of one of these episodes. And it's set on Halloween and he has to go out and give the biggest show that he's ever given because his ratings have been slipping recently. He hasn't been able to top Johnny Carson at all. He's just trying to hold on to his television show. It might be pulled from him if they don't get good ratings. And it's coming up on Sweeps Week and what have you. And that's whenever they really go over the ratings and choose whether, you know, the shows live or die at that point. Jack's been going through a lot of shit in his life. I mean, he has to deal with a television show that hasn't been able to top, you know, Johnny Carson. Its ratings are starting to slide. His wife ended up developing lung cancer and ended up dying. And he actually had her on the show like in the past, in the last couple of weeks before she even died. And it actually gave him the you know highest viewed episode that he's ever had. He took like a couple of weeks or a month hiatus, came right back to do the show. His ratings started to slip again. So he has to come up with a show that will knock everybody's socks off. And that will draw in all of the viewers, boost his ratings. That way he can keep his show and hopefully succeed and then eventually top Johnny Carson. And I love how all of this is just kind of set and portrayed in the movie because it starts off as like a documentary and it's narrated by Michael Ironside, which is fucking awesome. I know a lot of people recognize him from like scanners. I personally know him as Sam Fisher from the splinter cell series. That voice is just etched in my brain as Sam Fisher. I just cannot hear his voice without thinking of splinter cell. And speaking of splinter cell just has to make a comeback at some point, right? It's been far too long, but that's, that's a complete conversation for another time. But this movie is portrayed as like a straight up documentary. It really reminds me of like the early like VH1 like behind the music type shit, except it's about, you know, a late night host and it goes through like his life leading up to you getting the show and then you know, his success on the show and the, how the show started to turn and started to crumble in the ratings a little bit. And then the death of his wife, it even goes into some of his, you know, history with the cult. Apparently he was a member of the Bohemian Grove Society, which for those who don't know, this is actual real society. There's tons of different, you know, conspiracy theories and whatnot going around it. There's been like members that have been presidents. The elites of the world have been members of the Bohemian Grove and they meet in like these, this like out far out in the woods and amongst the tall trees and they have these rituals with owls and whatnot. I'm not trying to get into a whole fucking thing of it, but you know, it was actually really interesting that they incorporated this into the movie because it's something I kind of knew about. It's something I've known about since like high school, you know, me and my buddies talking about different conspiracy theories and different, you know, finding certain shit on the internet or what have you. I'm not really a super conspiracy theorist type of guy, but it was actually very interesting to hear Bohemian Grove. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, I actually know what that is. That's very interesting. And it actually shows you kind of like these little like rituals out in the woods and what have you. But it was like, OK, this movie's called Late Night with the Devil. He was part of the Bohemian Grove 
I'm wondering where this is going to go at this point. Like, how is Jack Delroy going to fare through the course of this movie? It starts off as like that documentary. It doesn't take very long to it actually kicks into the movie itself, because once it kicks into the movie, it feels like you're actually sitting there watching a full episode of late night television, uh, commercial breaks and all. I mean, you don't actually get the commercials, but in between when they are in commercial, you actually cut to black and white and you actually get to see kind of the behind the scenes on what's going on in the set of the late night television show some of the conversations that jack is having with like producers and whatnot and of course some shit is going wrong because like i mentioned he has to put on like the biggest show of his life he has to go out there and really blow people away well this is his halloween episode so what does he decide to do he decides to bring on a, a medium who can talk to you know ghosts and the people of the dead and you, he ended up bringing on like a skeptic who used to be like a medium or a magician and he actually turned to being a skeptic and he his famous thing is he goes out and proves all of these magicians and you know mediums and whatnot wrong and if they can prove him right that they do have these powers he will give them like a check of five hundred thousand dollars or something like that but nobody has ever earned the money because he always ends up proving them wrong and the last guest that he has on the show is also a specialist and she just released a book about the subject that's come with her named lily and she is possessed by a demon or a devil. This girl, Lily, was found under the control of a cult. She was only like 10 years old when they found her. And this section of the movie is actually kind of pretty creepy because as they're explaining the cult that they found her in and everything, it cuts to what I can only call like analog horror. For those who have been on YouTube, you may have known what analog horror is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like found footage VHS tapes. And it's like, it's very like, you know, it's first person, it's found footage and it's like all grainy. You have like the VHS lines and stuff in it, but it's like an analog horror videotape of the behind the scenes workings of this cult and their sacrifices that they make to bring in the demons and what have you. And they even make a note that, you know, during Halloween, people wear masks to hide from the demons and protect themselves from possession and whatnot, um, which comes into play much later, of course. But you do get some moments of like analog horror that are kind of cut throughout the movie and they are genuine genuinely creepy and it really kind of reminds me of like prince of darkness directed by john carpenter where you have like a couple moments where it's like vhs and it's staticky and i really remember the one where it's like outside of the church and it's like the camera panning over and you have like fog coming out of the church door and there's like a figure in there it reminds me of that in a way just like kind of the creepy unsettlingness and there's like barely any music involved um and it, it's very effective and that's really what this movie does well is be a effective at what it does it really buys into being a 1977 late night talk show from the set designs to the outfits and the costumes to the hairstyles to to everything i feel like it works out perfectly um if, if i didn't know what the movie was going into it and i just kind of walked in i would actually assume you were somebody was watching a late night talk show until i noticed it's david desmalkian or something but it was really great to see them go out of their way to make this an accurate portrayal of a late night tv show from back in the day and you even have like the of course like the band there and then you have like the sidekick that has their back and forth with the host of the show and whatnot but to get to the actual horror i mean this movie is called late night with the devil you expect the devil to be here in some capacity at some point point. and the one thing about this flick it is a very slow burn movie but even though there's not much happening, I feel like I was genuinely invested in everything. I was genuinely invested in the conversations and what Jack Delroy was saying to the guests that he has, because I was really trying to figure out the character of Jack Delroy. I mean, they make him out to be such like this lovable guy that everybody likes. And he doesn't, you know, you just want him to succeed and you want him to go out there and have the best show that he could have so he can keep his his program on the air. Um, but then as you as you kind of go throughout the the episode, episode of TV that he has, you kind of start seeing what he would really do to keep his show. And you're like, okay, you may have gone a little too far here, Jack. Maybe you need to pump the brakes a little bit. Maybe it's time to stop this. And as a lot of people try to tell him, but he's like, nope, show must go on. You want to keep this fucking show? We got to do it at all costs. And doesn't matter if the costs are people's lives or sanity or what have you. He's willing to do whatever it takes to keep this show on the air. And of course, that is Jack's downfall in the very end. I mean, there is genuinely creepy moments in here. I mean, the first guest that he has is like the, the medium who can talk to the spirits. Um, I forget what the, the, 
the guy's name was from like the early 2000s that actually toured and did this sort of thing but everybody who fucking just was out there calling him a goddamn scam artist because he was just like throwing out names until somebody recognized it and then he would just kind of play off and ask questions going off of that i forget the dude's name but the whole time this guy is working you can understand okay this is how he's doing it you know this is this is a complete scam until he starts experiencing something that's like okay this is a little out on the ordinary. This kind of seems serious. Lights start flickering. Shit starts happening. You, you know there's something wrong here. And then like you see in the trailer a little bit, the guy's eyes start rolling in the black back of his head and he starts freaking out and going in the convulsions and shit. You know some shit's going wrong. The second guest who is like the former like magician, paranormal type dude, and now he's a skeptic. He goes out there and proves everybody wrong. And he kind of gets annoying throughout the movie, but that's really the point of his character is kind of be that asshole throughout the film and try to prove everything wrong that is brought up. And he really, he does a good job of doing it. And then of course you have the third guest that comes on and he's trying to instantly prove her wrong before anything happens. You get to meet Lily and man, what a performance by this actress. Uh, her name is Ingrid Torelli and she plays Lily in the film she is genuinely creepy like she does a fantastic job in this and just the the way that she just stares at the camera and just has like a very like monotone voice whenever she's being asked questions or asked someone questions and then she kind of goes back and forth of being like a robot in a way and then just being like a bubbly girl um but you could tell there's definitely something like dark lying beneath the surface here but of course the, the one of the main highlights of the movie uh that if you've seen the trailer you probably know is the experiment that they do with her they actually try to prove that she is possessed that she they have a demon inside of her uh so they strap her to a chair and this woman sits down in front of her and is asking her questions and trying to bring the demon out and now since the exorcist came out in what 73 74 we've had you know hundreds of possession movies and you know most of them are cheesy or garbage, or trash, or, or just not effective at all. This one, I feel like, actually kind of works in a way. I wouldn't say it's, like, super scary. I wouldn't really say this movie is scary by any means. There's 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 a couple different little, little creepy parts in there, but I wouldn't really say this movie is, like, scary or terrifying or anything. It, it's very tense in certain situations. The possession in this movie is pretty effective in a way. I mean, you, you do have, like, a kind of a distorted voice in there. It sounds like there is just somebody else talking over her voice. I wouldn't say it's as as far as some of these possessions go where it really distorts it and makes it like unbelievable in a way this one actually seemed pretty decent it actually goes kind of with the exorcist you know the cuts happening in the face the face turning pale it doesn't it, they i don't know if they use prosthetics on her i don't know if it's a different girl but they she looks very different to how she you know whenever she gets introduced in the show whenever she like the possessed person takes over she looks very different and it's very effective, pretty creepy, especially because there's really no music going on during any of these, you know, tense or creepy parts of the movie. And I think that makes it even more effective. I'm part of the boat that always believes that silence makes everything scarier, but it does get pretty tense and, and pretty creepy as the demon starts kind of freaking out and it gets even kind of confused to how it got brought back and it's in front of a whole studio audience or whatever. It doesn't really know where it's at, but then shit gets real when the demon recognizes Jack Delroy and says that it remembers him from the woods. And you're like, Oh shit, Jack was involved with that cult in the woods. What did this guy do to meet this demon? previously what did he do did he meet this demon and, and like sell his soul to get this tv show what what's going on here we don't find out it we don't find any of this out you know this is just all hearsay from this demon the lady wants to get lily out of there jack says no this is amazing television we gotta go on we gotta press on and of course the skeptic believe this is all a farce even though we got to see lily's face change she even like you know levitated for a little bit but he still doesn't believe it and this is probably one of the more crazier scenes of the movie because he actually goes out and hypnotizes, you know, the right hand man of Jack Delroy, who is like the, you know, the second host of the show. He ends up hypnotizing him and the audience itself to believe that 
worms are coming out of this guy's neck and he like rips open his stomach. And this is actually a pretty kind of, this is actually kind of a pretty cool, like gory scene where the guy like starts pulling worms out of his neck and ripping them out of his uh, insides and what have you. But then, you know, it is all just a figment of our imagination is because he put everybody under hypnosis. And when they roll the tape back, the dude's just acting like this is all happening, but nothing's actually there. When you actually feel like, this did happen. You're pretty confused what, if, why all of this is happening all of a sudden. You think it's just the devil, but no, this dude actually put everybody under hypnosis, even the viewers, to believe that worms were coming out of this guy. And it's actually a pretty interesting idea to incorporate in this. And this, and that really sets up for what happens at the end of the movie here. And this is where I kind of have my only really gripe or nitpick with the movie, my only real flaw with it. Um, it kind of wraps up really fast, and it kind of goes in a direction that it didn't really go throughout the whole rest of the movie. Um, and I'm going to go into some spoilers here, but they, at the end of the movie, shit pops off because they go back and rewatch the tape of Lily's possession to see if it was actually people under hypnosis, because if it was hypnosis, you would be able to see what really happened on the film itself. Like they did previously with the other guy. Um, but when they go back and rewatch it, it's the same shit. Nothing was changed. She's still possessed. She's still doing the same stuff. Nothing has changed whatsoever, but you do kind of get a gl glimpse of Jack's wife briefly in the background. And from what I read just on Reddit, and I did notice a couple of them throughout the flick, there are some kind of like mirrored images like in a mirror or on a TV screen or somewhere, but you do kind of see Jack's wife throughout this movie in certain screens or background shots. If you're very eagle eyed, you have to be paying attention. I only notice it like once or twice, but apparently there are more throughout the flick, but shit really pops off because you know, Lily is actually possessed and she starts going on her spree. She ends up killing Jack's right hand dude by like twisting his neck the whole way around. She ends up killing the skeptic, the skeptic in one of the funniest scenes of the movie, because as soon as he finds out that this is all real and like the demons real or whatnot, he instantly gives into it and even tries to give it his, his check of $500,000. Like he was going to bribe this demon off from killing him, but no, it just like completely roasts him in front of everybody. Like literally roasts him alive in front of everybody. And the woman that was the caregiver of Lily gets strung up by her cross necklace and her neck gets you know split open and blood goes everywhere. This shit is kind of what I expected. I expected shit to just turn into absolute mayhem. I expected this demon to start, you know, killing everybody in the audience or what have you. And just a bloodbath ensues. But that's not really what happens. A couple people get killed there on the set. Most of the audience makes it out, except for some of the masked people that you kind of get to see throughout the movie. A lot of shady motherfuckers are hidden in this audience, specifically that motherfucker that's dressed up as a skeleton. I always wondered what was going on with this skeleton dude, because you keep seeing him throughout the movie. And Jack even sees the skeleton dude when he's going through his fucking A24 type, you know, trauma induced fucking vision quest that he has at the end of the movie because uh, this is the only real gripe that i have with the movie you don't really have anything like this throughout the rest of the movie it's all very for a lack of a better term grounded as far as you want to say you know talking about a possession movie with the devil it's very grounded feels very 70s you have the analog horror aspects like i mentioned and like the very documentary type style and at the very end of the movie it kind of takes a turn and it goes into like i mentioned an a24 type RT feel where you have Jack kind of losing his mind. I mean, the best way to describe it is like you see in the trailer, like the spiral behind him and he's fucking laughing and shit. Uh, but then he has like his little vision, a 24 like vision quest where it gets very atmospheric and very like he's walking through the woods of trees and stuff. And then he opens up and he sees his, his wife on her deathbed and like, like the bright white room and have what have you. Um, it, it's all very artsy and experimental and like a 24 ish. That's the only way I can fucking describe it. But I mean, a lot of people are trying to go that way. It's a very, uh, elevated horror type thing at the very end. And that's the only thing I didn't really like about it. Just because we didn't really see anything like that throughout the rest of the movie. It, it's a very kind of like, it's kind of a heel turn in a way. It goes a very different direction at the very end. And I mean, it's easily, it's easy to see that it's just like his trauma and it kind of shows you what happened happened maybe previously like maybe this is kind of a you know a flashback in a way because it is his, his wife on her deathbed of course this is paraphrasing because obviously i'm not gonna remember exactly what she said 
but it, it's the gist of when you when you ask for something, something is going to be taken and taken in return, which is pretty much like Jack went and was part of that cold in the woods. It seems like he maybe sold his soul or sold something away to keep his late night show or even just get successful, successful in the first place. And in return, his wife ended up getting sick with cancer and ended up dying. So in turn for his success and fame, it took his wife away. So what is happening here? Jackoff obviously wants to keep a show. He wants to have the biggest, you know, late night episode ever to boost his ratings and keep a show and possibly beat Johnny Carson. So in a way, the demon is trying to help him with that. This is his biggest show ever. The guy, his producer that he talks to throughout the movie keeps telling him like, this is working. We got to keep doing what we're doing. Fucking everybody's loving it. We're getting, you know, calls off the hook. So in return, uh, he did kind of get what he wanted, but it also took something from him in return because it killed everybody around him. And it even sets him up as the murderer because his wife asks him for mercy. He, she asks him off because she is in so much pain. She's dying. She wants him to end her life. So he takes the sacrificial knife and he kills his wife. And then you know, it kind of transitions and it shows you that he actually killed Lily, the possessed girl on the set of the TV show amongst all the dead bodies that are around him. He ends up stabbing and killing this Lily girl, where it's like originally it seemed like he, you know, he gave something up to get famous and get a television show or what have you. And then it ended up taking his wife and then he ended up wanting to keep his television show and being even bigger. So it possibly made him out to look like a murderer. I don't know if I'm reading this correctly. Maybe uh, whoever watched it here has a better view on the movie itself. Maybe you have a better synopsis of it, a, be a better explanation for the movie. I would love to hear it in the comments. Make sure to, to drop me a comment on, on what you thought of the movie or what you thought the ending kind of portrayed in a way. But that's the way I kind of portrayed it is Jack just never learned. Jack never learned from his lessons previously. He was always just going out there to do the next thing, to take the show to the next level, to be even more famous, to keep his show. It didn't matter what really was the cost for it. He was willing to go and do whatever it took to keep his television show. And like I mentioned, I, I don't I wouldn't have a problem with kind of the artsy type A24 shit at the very end, if they would have kind of incorporated it throughout the rest of the movie in certain aspects. But it kind of seemed a little off compared to the rest of the film because the whole rest of the film, it makes you feel like you are in 1977. It makes you feel like you're at home watching this television show while it's airing live. Uh, except for like, you know, in between the commercials where it turns black and white and you're following them around. I wouldn't say that really took me out because it's still black and white. It still feels old school. It feels like a documentary crew is kind of following them around at that time. Um, but yeah, whenever it kind of cuts and, it, and the, even the aspect ratio changes at the very end, it widens up and it feels bright and it feels like a new movie you're watching. Um, it just feels very different from the rest of it. And it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. And it just didn't necessarily work for me. It's the same with the way that Lily you know, kind of went out and did her thing at the end. Whenever she killed everybody, her head just kind of turns orange and on fire and it splits open and shit. Very out there design, very fucking weird. Was not expecting that kind of design or for them to go that route at all. To be honest, I just expected the end to be a bloodbath of her going around killing people the audience killing everybody that was in the way possessing other people the other people that were possessed are going around killing everybody and maybe jack and maybe the woman that was there you know being the guardian for lily they're trying to get out of or some way that was maybe going to be the last third act of the movie is them trying to escape the station while all this bullshit's going on um which i think would have been a little bit more entertaining than what we actually got but i'm not going to be mad because the movie didn't do what I wanted them to do. You know, I, I respect the, the route they took and what they did. Um, it just personally wasn't for me at the very end, but I, overall, I actually really fucking enjoyed this movie. Um, this is a movie I can actually see maybe kind of going back to like each, you know, October, each spooky month of the year, you know, around Halloween and maybe popping this on on shutter because I feel like watching this at home would be kind of a better viewing experience than in the theater as I watched it because, you know, you're supposed to be that viewer at home watching late night TV. So I feel like watching it on your couch at home, I feel like that will kind of be of a better viewing choice than watching it in the theater. 
I don't think it ruined the experience by any means. I just feel like once it comes out, it'll probably be better enjoyed watching it from your couch. But yeah, David Dasmalkian, what an amazing performance by this dude. He should definitely be in the running for more lead roles going forward. I don't care if it's in horror movies or what have you. He definitely proved in this movie that he has the chops to be a leading role guy. Uh, and I think not only that, I think he could easily be a late night TV guy. I think he was perfect for this role. And I just loved how he kind of seemed like he studied late night hosts and whatnot. Cause he had like all the mannerisms and kind of the way that they, you know, they have the punchlines for their jokes and turn to the band and whatnot. It was very, you know, it, it felt very natural. It felt very natural to me, you know, because I grew up, you know, watching mainly Conan. Conan was my dude watching at night, sometimes Jimmy Kimmel or what have you, or, you know, uh, Letterman at times. But Conan was the dude I always really, you know, tuned in for. And even Conan was much later than where this movie was set. You still see a lot of the similarities there. But, you know, I, I really want to give a shout out to the directors for this, for really buying in and doing everything they could to make this feel like you know, a 1977 late night talk show. Um, and what a hell of a performance by David S. Malky. And, and not only just him, but everybody else really gave it their all. I wouldn't really say there was much bad acting in, in this movie really at all. I, I think it was very solid. And especially for like a low budget movie that that's going to be going to shutter. I mean, it was in theaters um, before a lower budget movie. I think the quality was there. I think it was a very, I think it was a very tight and good film. It had some effective creepiness in there. I wouldn't say it's scary by any means though, but I highly recommend going to check this out. And also one of the funniest parts of the movie at the very beginning, you're going to get like eight different production companies that come up with all their different logos and shit. I thought it was part of the movie at, at, at one point because of some of the logos looking very retro. I thought it was part of the movie, but no, these, these production logos and intros kept going on and on and on and on. And I just kind of started laughing by like the sixth or seventh one. Cause I thought it was a joke. Um, but it was actually the production companies that were involved with the movie. I just never seen that many in a row. Um, but yeah, I got a real kick out of that. But for those who haven't seen Late Night with the Devil and you watch this, 100% go check it out. I think it's definitely worth watching, uh, whether you go to the theater or wait for it to pop on Shutter. I definitely recommend checking this out. Very original. Haven't seen anything really like this. I, I definitely can't wait to watch it again just to kind of see what else I missed in the background at some points. Love the retro uh, nostalgia feel of it because I'm a sucker for retro stuff and uh, old classic cinema. So I, I loved everything about it. Um, highly recommend go check it out. But that is the episode for this week. If you haven't already, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Cinema Trip Reviews. Also, wherever you get your podcast, drop in and leave us a good review there as well. And we'll see everybody next week. 